Hey, Jeff Jantz here at Jantzer Studios. So in my last couple of videos, I've been working on the very beginning of rebuilding this guy. And I kind of got to this point where I had the foam and the mouth plate in here. And I'm just making a few changes to make it a little bit better. But I mentioned at the end of the last video that I was thinking about shrinking this down and making it a little bit smaller. And so I wanted to kind of take a minute and explain in this video the reason why I'm shrinking it down and making it smaller. So you can see here that in this photo that the puppet is almost as big as my whole arm. And you can tell that I'm not very comfortable getting that shot. And even though the pictures came out okay, I think that shrinking the puppet down will make things a lot easier for our puppeteers. And you can tell here just how big it is. So if you look from my fingertips where her mouth is, down to her waist is almost to my shoulder. And so after doing some research and seeing the sizes of other people's puppets, I realized that I really needed to shrink her down. So here's what I came up with. So this is the newer version and I'm really happy with how it came out and the size. So from my fingertips, which is where her mouth is, down to the bottom of her waist is all above my elbow. And that just makes everything so much easier to control it. You can kind of see that here because our puppeteer looks pretty comfortable and puppeteering is not easy. So you want to make your puppeteers as comfortable as possible. One of the things that makes a smaller puppet so much easier is just the ability to get your head out of the way. So if I have her up in the camera, I can just get my head just out of the way a little bit and I don't have to do anything weird like put it way down at this weird funky angle and get a kink in my neck. So there's no one right or wrong way to build a puppet or to scale a puppet for that matter. But here's what I kind of came up with that works for me and what I've realized kind of works for our puppeteers on this project is that if you make the puppet so that the mouth is obviously going to be where your fingers are and then the neck or the bottom of the neck would be right where your wrist is. And then as long as you make the middle of the waist right above your elbow, and that gives you a lot of control of the puppet. So think about how your arm moves so that you can tilt, tilt the head back and forth, move the mouth plate up and down, and then move the puppet around easily by having that extra control in your shoulder. So that seems to work for me. Hey, put in the chat box what works for you as far as figuring out what the right scale of the puppet is. I know some people talk about figuring out how wide the mouth plate is. And if the mouth plate is between a certain size and a certain size, then you're on the right track. So maybe that works for you. This is what works for me. So if you're getting into puppet building, good luck to you. And just remember, it's always about a lot of trial and error. All right, we'll see you next time.